All right. Uh, welcome to Teams Talks. I'm David Powers. Uh, thank you for joining this, us this afternoon. Uh, in this, these sessions in Teams Talks, uh, we want to present an opportunity for the students to meet uh, our Mavs Edge partners uh, and to highlight opportunities from those partners. Uh, Mavs Edge is a program where we assist our employer partners with developing internship opportunities or assist employers who already have an internship program with promoting those opportunities and driving traffic uh, and awareness to their handshake posting. So uh, we're also going to discuss a topic that is relevant to your internship search uh, as well as as getting to meet our employers. And today's topic is one of the, I think, uh, most uh, stressful for students and, and uh, nebulous and kind of confusing is networking. Uh, so we're going to talk about how to network, what networking is, uh, how to get started, I'm really excited um, to get into that. And I'm joined today by Ari Paz of Axion Com uh, Community Development. Uh, good afternoon, Ari. Hey, good afternoon. Um, I'm actually joining you all from Austin, Texas. I'm visiting my brother. It's his last semester at UT. Um, and I do speak to him about networking a lot as well. Um, I'm ready to do an introduction whenever. Oh, that's awesome, great. Um, yeah, I, I like to start each of these sessions with kind of a practice that I think students is really important to students to be able to pitch, to introduce themselves and to hear other people pitch and to kind of give their their thoughts, you know, give some thought to what their elevator uh, statement or elevator pitch ought to sound like. So uh, I'm going to give my elevator pitch and I still get nervous doing it depending on who the audience is or whether it's being recorded or not. So this is typically how I would introduce myself to to an employer or maybe even potentially a student. Uh, hi, I'm David Powers. I'm the assistant director of internships here at the Lockheed Martin Career Development Center, uh, which means I assist our employer partners with developing internship programs and I direct our Mavs Edge internship program. Ari, I'll turn it over to you. Hi everyone, I'm Ari Paz. I own and manage a real estate and construction firm in Dallas-Fort Worth. I offer project management uh, to small scale builders, meaning most of them don't build more than about 20 units a year. Um, I work with a lot of contractors as well, um, helping developers with replatting or property owners with leasing their units um, and a few other real estate services. Currently, our volume is mostly in wet utility infrastructure, meaning we perform the installation or improvements of water and wastewater lines to new sites. That's a super a super introduction. And what I what I talk to students about all the time is um, what's appropriate for the audience, right? What's appropriate for that meeting? Uh, if you were if you were did you in our previous meeting, I'm going to be referring back to a meeting that Ari and I had a couple months ago uh, when she joined the EDGE program. I was so impressed uh, with her story and all that she's been able to, to accomplish. Um, if, if you were introducing yourself um, to a possible business partner or at a, at a meeting uh, of some sort uh, and giving your title uh, and your organization, what would that look like for you or how would that sound? I would maybe shorten it to one sentence. Um, you want to attract the attention of any company you're pitching to, um, or if you're networking and trying to pick up a mentor here, or trying to maybe get a recommendation letter from a professor, you really want to make sure you're very clear and direct. Um, a lot of us can kind of ramble. I know I do that sometimes. I want to explain myself and end up giving people a whole reading an essay to them. Um, so I think I would maybe go with something like, uh, good afternoon, Mr. Henry. Um, Ari Paz. I own and manage uh, Xion Community Development in Dallas, Fort Worth. We're a uh, local firm that offers real estate and construction for construction services. And leave it out there. I'm telling him what I do, what my name is, and what area I work in. It's, uh, yes, I mean that's uh, that's fantastic. You know, what's the relevant information for that context and that that situation? Um, you can. 
I think oftentimes students get so nervous they feel like they have to sell themselves. And we're about to have we're about to have our uh, career fair this week, and there's going to be a lot of pitching, right? There's going to be a lot of walking from table to table and introductions, you know. And and a lot of times you don't need a 20 or 30 second introduction, you know, in that setting. You know who you are, uh, what your major is, maybe what your plans are, your time to graduation, when they'd be able to hire you, you know, when you graduate. Uh, and then, you know, why you're why you're talking to them, right? Why you're interested in in the position or why you're at the table. Uh, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for providing uh, providing that overview. I, I would love for you to talk a little more about, you know, your personal story was really, really interesting to me um, and how you were able to um, build relationships uh, and network almost naturally. It was just really interesting to hear how you met people and saw opportunities uh, is the way is kind of the way I remember it. Uh, you care to kind of take us through um, through your career and kind of uh, your, your development, even starting back at the early stages. I thought that was fascinating. We could learn a lot from that. Yes, thank you. So I began my career in the criminal justice field. I did that for about three years. Um, but at the time I was working the night shift, I was in grad school working on my MPA. And in grad school, I learned about economic development and I knew I did not want to keep working nights. Um, so I was looking to transition careers. And because I was introduced to um, working in local municipalities, um, creating budgets, uh, managing finances for projects, I became very interested in the real estate development sector and I was actually doing some research on a local nonprofit and one of the board members for the nonprofit worked as a project manager for a developer that I ended up working for. And that's why connections are so important because I was not qualified for the position. I did have a lot of administrative experience by then but because I was able to build a strong relationship with that woman, she ended up just reaching out and saying, hey, my administrative assistant is leaving next week. Are you interested in a position? And it was my last year of grad school and I was looking for an opportunity. I didn't know exactly where to go because my experience was um, about, it was, I had mixed experience. So I didn't know where exactly I could um, go with the experience I had at the time. I was working in higher education as an advisor at the same time working at a jail. Um, so through that relationship, I did get a full-time job offer from them. Um, I had a pretty good salary at the time. I think I was 23 and what they offered me um, was very attractive. So even though I did not know much about real estate development, specifically in the commercial retail sector, I just jumped in kind of, um, relied on her as a mentor. Um, so she was a project manager. I was her administrative assistant. And through that relationship, I just started meeting a lot of the other professionals in the industry. Anytime I saw someone on LinkedIn who worked in construction, real estate development, or if someone came by the office, maybe a vendor, I tried to be polite and always communicate with all of them. Um, maybe I wasn't working for them or I didn't know them, but you never know where that next relationship is gonna get you. So you wanna make sure you introduce yourself to as many people as possible. Um, and you want to make sure that you're very clear about what your goals are because you can be at this level right now, but if your goal is to get up here, who do you know in between those two areas that can help you get up here? It might be someone you met five years ago, someone you met yesterday at the gas station. Um, you just never know. Uh, so through that relationship, I learned a lot about um, real estate development because she was also doing some work outside of her full-time job um, where I was also helping her with that because we were good friends. So after that, I wanted to um, come back to Dallas because with that developer, we were building a lot of retail, Starbucks, 7-Eleven, Popeyes, Burger King, the small Walmart convenience stores. 
Um, but I wanted to work on housing. So I tried to meet as many people as possible in Dallas that worked in housing. Um, meaning they were either residential builders or contractors that did work for residential developers, um, any planners or consultants that helped with the subdivision of land. Um, and I met most of them through LinkedIn. This was also pre-COVID, so I was going to maybe five networking events a month just to get out there. Okay. And I'm not... Back then, I wasn't as confident as I am now in just approaching someone like, hey, how did you hear about this event? Um, but the more you think about it, the more difficult it is to get out there. So I would just say, well, this can lead to an opportunity. Um, so I just started approaching people and um, attending events. So through that, I did pick up a few mentors who said, well, this is who you need to talk to or this is the advice I can give you. So I kind of put all that together and I did apply to multiple jobs in Dallas and I was either underqualified or overqualified. So ultimately, I started my own consulting firm. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jeff, let me let me let me take you back because um that sounds so that sounded so easy all that's i mean it, it's 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 it, it you made it sound so easy you know i met this person i met that person i reached out here i reached out there you know and that that doesn't speak to all the effort that you put into that thought that you put into that i was just kind of curious when you said you, you started meeting people in dallas you know again that sounds easy but uh did you use primarily linkedin to to start to make those connections within the industry and i guess my other question would be um, we talk a lot about mentoring and the importance of a mentor and what that looks like. I was curious if you could talk a little more about how you developed that mentor relationship. You said you added other mentors along the way. How did you reach out and, and connect with those folks in that way? Honestly, I would just go on Eventbrite and look up events in Dallas um, that were in the industries I wanted to get into, real estate, construction, community development, um, planning and urban development and I didn't necessarily know what all that meant I had no idea what development <laughs> was um, community development um, urban planning all of that but nobody knows everything it takes all of us time to learn different things so I didn't let that intimidate me um, when I did go to networking events and I spoke to some people there were obviously the really nice people who wanted to help me and were okay with my lack of knowledge in the industry. Right. Uh, but then there were also some very mean people who kind of made me feel out of place. Like, what are you doing here? Um, but I didn't let it stop me because I knew I could go far and all I all I needed to do was maybe dedicate more time. Um, so I did a lot of research. I learned a lot of stuff on my own. Um, a lot of the services I offered through my firm, I did not learn in school or in the technical courses I took, but um, we have the internet and Google University is like one of the best institutions you can attend. Just spending time on there, looking up anything you wanna learn about um, is really helpful. I'm, you've got my mind going in so many different directions. Um, I've got to, I've almost got to, I've got to regroup and process uh, what you said. I had three or four questions, but I uh, I, I kind of lost them. Uh, they'll, they'll come back hopefully in just a moment. So if I were um, a student, that's gutsy. I mean, it really what you did is that it takes a lot of um, it takes a lot of courage to do that. I guess, oh, it's coming back to me now. The question that I wanted to ask, so you can help us toughen up just a little bit, and I'm also, I think it would be entertaining to hear, what was, if it's appropriate to share, what was the worst thing you had said to you by the mean, pe by the mean people? Um, one guy said, you're kind of new to this. Uh, maybe you shouldn't have came. <laughs> Dang, that's yeah. rough. Right. I I think I asked something and he was just like shocked that I was so new to the industry. I guess it was like a working event for more experienced professionals. Right. Um, but it, I did feel kind of bad. I probably right. left for that event earlier. 
um, than intended. But that's just what you're going to face every day, whether you're a uh, early um, uh, young professional, mid-level professional, or someone with 30 years of experience. There's always going to be those people that are going to uh, make it challenging for you to move forward with your career. Uh, but I always tell people to apply all that negative um, feedback, negative energy into something positive. Prove them wrong, pretty much. Do, do you consider yourself um, an extroverted person? I mean, did, did that come natural to you? Do you enjoy generally and get energy from meeting people? Or would you say you're more introverted? I'm a mix of both. I right. love being on my own. Like, I don't want to talk to anyone for like a few hours a day because I just need to decompress and re-energize. And that's how I do that. Shut off my phone, um, just read a book on my own. Um, but then I also uh, get a lot of strength from speaking to people and hearing their stories, being motivated and knowing what they're going through because we all have different challenges and we manage challenges uh, differently. So just learning from others really keeps me going, just seeing how they manage things. Right, do you, um, do, I was curious, I, I love the, you said it was Eventbrite where you found those things. You give away all these, the cool secrets. Eventbrite, um, and you know, as just as someone who moved to Texas three years ago, you know, I, I went through some of that. Where do I go to to try to get connected to find groups? I mean, it you know, and it is it is kind of a it's important to become a member of different things. I mean, I know a lot of students, especially those who are introverted, they may not consider themselves joiners. You know, um, so so that's I think it's really important is to understand where these sources are for networking, where you can meet the people that you need uh, to meet. Um, and I was curious, what what sort of research did you do? Any research in terms of who might be at those events, or I mean, I did, I guess you just looked for the event title. Uh, what did you do to, to try to be strategic about your network? I would do research on the host. Who is planning this event? Where is the event going to be hosted? Um, just to kind of understand what type of attendees would be there. Um, sometimes there were sponsors. What type of sponsors are they? Um, are, do they work in a field I'm interested in getting into? Or is it someone that maybe I could meet and then refer as a connection to someone else in my network? Um, anytime you help someone or meet someone, you don't really want to ask what you're gaining from it, but what can you offer them that in return they will then multiply the results of um, what can ha what can come from it. Um, so I, I mean, even on LinkedIn, I would reach out to industry professionals directly and say, hey, I'm Ari, I'm actually looking to get into this, or I have an issue with a small project in Dallas. I see you have 30 years of experience in urban development. Would you be comfortable meeting for coffee over Zoom? That's the person I became, and a lot of people don't respond when I reach out to them on LinkedIn or email, um, right. which is fine. I understand we're all busy. Sometimes we miss emails, so I don't, I don't um, get mad or I'm disappointed because if I really want to speak to them, then I have to make the effort. I have to reach out to them again or maybe reach out to my network and see if they know them. Um, you can't hold grudges when people don't get back to you because we're we're in a busy world um dallas is one of the busiest cities worldwide i think so uh, just understanding that sometimes you have to push more to get what you want and then going back to your how to obtain a mentor question that i skipped over <laughs> i'm glad you picked it back up right yeah so when i would meet with someone and connect with them if I saw a value in that relationship, um, maybe I could learn from their experience, whether it was um, getting uh, advice on my personal, professional life, any um, adventurous pursuits like travel. Um, I would just kind of adopt them as my mentor. I wouldn't necessarily ask, but I would contact <laughs> them anytime I had a question or I would invite them out for lunch because I wanted them to also be happy with speaking to me 
And I know how difficult it is for some of the busier professionals. So I would meet them um, for lunch. I've driven several hours to meet someone. Um, and I've kind of just adopted mentors that way because if you ask someone, hey, do you want to be my mentor? Um, a lot of people are hesitant now to take on that responsibility because it can be a lot of work. As a mentor to several folks, I can say it can be a bit um, difficult, but just offer a relationship. What can you support them with? They may be needing um, some help a few hours with admin work, or they might be planning a trip. Um, that's the type of mentee I like to be. I don't only want to take from you. I want you to tell me how I can also um, pay back the favor. Yeah, so smart. You're so smart about this. I mean, again, I, I'm so excited that you agreed to, to chat uh, about it because, um, I mean, you approach networking and I don't know how much reading you did or study you did or if, if you have books on networking that you you really like, but um, or if it was just a natural, just sort of a natural thing. You, do you think it was just your curiosity about the business that drove you to meet these people or did you did you do any sort of study or research? I saw you shake your head. So I didn't really do any research on networking. I don't think it's something that you can necessarily learn from um, through a book. I think it's something you have to be active and engaged in so you can understand the value of it and um, be more comfortable doing it, uh, practicing um, the art of networking. Um, even now, if I'm speaking to someone or if I have a speaking engagement, it's it's not something that comes easy. Um, even though I've been doing it for several years, it doesn't come easy to me, but I enjoy just sharing what my path has been like because networking has really helped me build my self-worth. Um, the people that I've met have really believed in me and pushed me to do things when I didn't believe in myself. And it's also helped me build my net worth and I say that because the feedback and advice that they have given me on investments I have made in my education in real estate, um, it's really paid off. So networking for me, it's like, it's not about what you know, it's really about who you know, because that person, that middleman or middle woman is really gonna help you uh, get to where you want to be at a much quicker pace, a much smoother pace. And um, to be very honest about it, I was looking for a land uh, land lender in Dallas, and I had a lot of trouble finding one because you can't really get financing for land unless you're a builder. I'm not a builder. Most of my clients are builders or developers. Um, so me not being a builder, I had a lot of trouble getting financing to purchase land and I really wanted to purchase land. So I asked everyone in my network, I did a lot of research on lenders that would maybe um, qualify me under the experience I have working for builders. So I met a realtor once and it was so easy. I think we met in person at an event and he knew a local land lender so I kind of helped him with a project where he was trying to um, help his clients subdivide land and uh, build a new house. So I did consulting for him and then he put in a good word with his lender for me. So then I got financing to buy two parcels. So now I own uh, two land properties thanks to that connection. Wow. <laughs> you, 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 said, you said a couple of things a ways back that really really stuck with me that I think sabotage people when they're trying to build their networks. One it, one really important thing that you said that I want to go back and highlight is not holding grudges. You know, um, when people don't get back to you, you know, we talk about that a lot even in the job search, right? Students have applied and applied and applied and applied and they're not hearing anything, you know, back from uh, from folks or they have a bad experience at a networking event and it kind of hits, you know, their confidence takes a hit. So they're not they're not nearly as likely to want to continue to apply or to continue to reach out. Um, 
So I think that's um, that's critical, not holding grudges and, and trying to uh, trying to stay positive. And then the other thing that you mentioned that I think is so important and takes a lot of pressure off of you as the networker is a big part of networking is listening and asking the right questions. And as you said, trying to be helpful. You know, what is it they need? How could I be of assistance to them rather than me feeling like I have to pitch to you who I who I am? Right. Did you have you found that some? Absolutely. Um, it's something I learned a while back. I don't think I fully understood it. Um, I knew I was getting a lot back from networking and it took a while to realize that because there were months where I was meeting so many people, making so many connections, but I didn't see the return or the value in it. And then there was those people as well that made it difficult to continue putting myself out there. Right. Um, but once you understand that it takes time sometimes sometimes you meet one person within your first event and that person can just help elevate your career immediately um, because they may have a really strong network they may work for a large um, company and are seeking um, uh, immediate new hires but i think once you understand the value in networking and you you're patient and respectful to the time of others and offer something in return, you'll really understand why some challenges come from it and the amazing, incredible results that can also um, come as a result of all that effort being made. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I, I keep thinking about the number of people you've been, you were so systematic and strategic about meeting people. I, I'm thinking about how large back in the old day would say how, how back in the old days, they would say how large your Rolodex is. I mean, what your contact list looks like. And I was curious what system you might use. You know, what we encourage students all the time, let's say uh, you're applying for a job and you haven't you haven't uh, contacted your reference that you need to list in the last five years. You know, or maybe it's been three or four years since you touched base. And then your next conversation with them is, hey, can you help me with this? I want to I want to give you something to do. I, I need you to write a reference letter for me or I need for you to fill out, you know, something on an application. I was curious um, what kind of thought you give to maintaining those relationships and following up with folks. Do you have a I mean, do you have a system that you use or is it just something that comes natural? I'm not the best at following up with people now that I know um, so many people and I say that um, in the most humble way. Um, I feel bad when I don't keep up with my friends uh because a lot of them are getting married having babies um but they understand that i am an entrepreneur um i don't have a set schedule i don't have a nine to five i work whenever i'm needed whether it's morning uh late nights or weekends um so we just have that respect for one another and that's what i try to practice with my network i know a lot of them have um, young kids or older kids or they're um, in very strong executive positions where their time is very limited. So I do try to dedicate time every month, uh, maybe two days a month to follow up with um, 15 or 20 people um, every month, um, not all of them, but um, like every month I'll follow up with this group and then next month on um, this other group. and. Just sending them a text. I don't expect any responses um, soon or ever. I just want to want to let them know that they're still in my prayers and that I want to keep them in my network. Um, and when I do have events I'm attending or I'm planning, um, I do send out like a mass email to them um, because that's another way of not dedicating as much time to have lunch with everyone, but just showing them, hey, this is what I'm working on. Uh, I just wanted to update you if you're interested or know anyone that might be um, will be here or please share their contact and I can reach out. Yeah, that is so awesome. So you you kind of you kind of do have a system. It sounds like it, might not, it, it might not be an on paper system, but you do. You kind of do have a system. That's very, very cool. This next question I have, I thought of kind of on the fly during the discussion. It's something that I've I've worked with students on in the past and kind of be patient with me because I don't have it in, uh, I don't have it perfectly articulated. So I'm going to be kind of trying to put it together. But um, 
where I'm from is very, very, very rural in Kentucky. Uh, 1,200 students, excuse me, 1,200, 1,200 people in my hometown. 16 students in my graduating class. Really, really small town. So um, you, being from a rural area where some of the best jobs are factory jobs, manufacturing jobs, production jobs in the factory, right? Um, were, were some of the best jobs that, that you would see. And the culture there in a rural environment, um, maybe even in a, a small town that is less uh, ad advantaged, let's say, socioeconomically advantaged, maybe not coming from a, let's just, I'll just be very transparent since we're, <laughs> since we're just, we're having a chat, maybe not coming from a, necessarily a status of wealth, you know, or maybe even being in a disadvantaged kind of a situation. I I feel like it's really difficult for to jump into. I, I hate to use the word class, but it is it is kind of a class thing, right? I mean, you're in meetings with people who I, I would assume are working it with million dollar, maybe multi million dollar deals, right? Um, or and you may be making them yourself. We haven't talked a ton about you know the the inner inner workings of your business. But I don't know if you've always been in that position and, and where you've come from. Do you have any experience in trying to jump that gap or feel comfortable maybe in a room? You know, what, how would you advise someone from an area like that or with a background like that? What steps could they take to make them feel, themselves feel comfortable or confident um, making that move? Because you really are really having to step outside of a comfort zone, for instance, um, I knew students who'd never put on a suit, didn't own a suit, didn't want to own a suit, didn't want to wear a suit. And when they put it on, it felt, you know, it, it just felt off, right? Uh, they didn't feel like they were themselves. I mean, can you speak to that um, shift or that that the difference in, in working through some of that? I don't know if you had to. Yes. Um, I think you just have to be confident and know how to sell yourself. We see a lot of great individuals and companies that are great with branding. Um, they may not be doing what they're saying, but their branding is really attracting all these customers, um, right. all this, a strong network. So I myself don't practice any marketing uh, because I haven't needed to. I mainly work by referral, but it's really about just being genuine with the customers or the people you're talking to um, and just selling yourself. You might not have 10 years of experience, but make yourself sound like you do. Talk to them about your experience um, at a much higher capacity because a lot of times we don't give ourselves enough credit for what we've done. Uh, when I started managing projects, I was like, yeah, I'm just starting off. Um, I started the business a few months ago. Uh, but then I thought, well, I worked for a developer where we worked or I supported project managers with up to 30 projects um, a month. Um, yeah, every few months. So then that experience kind of snapped and I said, well, I am qualified to manage your projects. Um, I worked for one of the top retail developers in the U.S. and even though I did not own that company or I was not in a high leadership position, I was the person on the bottom helping a lot of the projects be carried out. So that's kind of what um, gave me uh, more confidence in selling myself to new clients, um, but also uh, the people I knew. If I had a big client who let's say built um, 20 homes, uh, a year, I would contact someone in my network that maybe knew him um, or could speak well about me, and that would also help. So that's just where networking also pays off. Yeah, it's again, that's that's really smart, and like I said, um, very strategic. And I think the word I was looking for to encapsulate all of that rambling I was doing is imposter syndrome. Yes. Maybe you, a lot of times you don't feel like you may, but maybe you belong in the room. Um, because it's not what you're accustomed to uh, or not what you grew up around. Uh, I could talk to you all day and then time will get away from us, but I, I wanted to give you an opportunity to uh, to talk about your your internship program and your offerings. I wanted to, first off, thank you for uh, making those opportunities available to UTA students. 
uh, and I just wanted you to maybe chat about uh, the status of those positions or uh, promote any openings that you might have currently. And then we'll wrap things up with the five burning questions. Yeah, so our internship positions open up as needed. Um, I do hire a minimum of three student interns a year. Um, they can be high school interns as young as 16 um, or uh, undergrad or graduate student interns. Um, we do have an intern now that is getting her bachelor's in finance. Um, she's working as a project coordinator. She did not have a lot of experience, but neither did I when I started working in project management. So I do like to pay back um, the good deed that the people that helped me um, did for me. So I recruit interns that are not very attractive on paper. I focus more on the conversation we have when I'm interviewing them. Mm -hmm. um, then I started um, creating a short list of questions. I think five to seven questions asking them about themselves. How would you handle this situation in this project? Um, can you do research on this topic just to see how much, um, how resourceful they are pretty much because my business has all relied on uh, me being resourceful. Everything I do now, I did not learn in school. Um, I learned at on Google University, just doing research, what land development is, understanding zoning, permitting, all of that. Um, so right now we are rebranding um, because 90% of our clients are Hispanic Spanish speakers. And we're changing our name to Vamos a Invertir, which means let's invest. And we'll make that clear on everything we share. Um, I'm helping a lot of investors and builders or individuals, um, not necessarily with real estate investing, but investing in their business. So I want them to either start the entrepreneurial dream they've been having, um, help them grow their current business. Uh, if they need any help with financing for equipment or property so they can have an office, I'm trying to help them scale um, through the uh, connections I've made with banks. So we are looking for an intern to help us kind of brand, uh, build out the website, um, and maybe have some understanding of uh, real estate development and small business management. Uh, we haven't posted anything anywhere, but we are working on creating um like a one pager to share uh the requirements for that internship awesome thank you um through the, let's get through the burning questions and if we have a, a student who would like to introduce themselves maybe um give their elevator pitch if they if, they, if they've got it in them this afternoon we'd love to give them a chance to do that but um what was your first job uh, and uh, what was your dream job growing up as a young professional? My family, I was raised by entrepreneurs. Um, they owned a small tortilla shop in Oak Cliff. Um, my mom quit her corporate job and she had a dream of opening a small tortilla shop. Uh, we're Mexican and we love fresh tortillas. So at 13, that was my first job. But I would say my first job out of high school was uh, I worked at a tax office. I was a front desk clerk, so I took in all the new clients. Thank you. Who or what has been most instrumental in your career development? We talked about uh, your networking, uh, the, your success in networking, but outside of networking, what would you say has been most instrumental? Um, having a strong head, not letting um, others stop you. Uh, I'm very honest about those certain people that I've met that have made it very challenging to continue the path I want. But then there were also people that really impacted me. Um, about seven years ago, I met a woman who owned her own project management firm. I visited her office in person. I did not know her at all, but someone said, hey, you should speak to her. So I went to bug her one day. Um, she was not expecting me. Right. And 
I just told her, hey, I'd love to get in project management. Someone said, um, you were a good person to speak to. And I was stuttering. I was so nervous. Um, and she said, well, what are you waiting for? If you want to get in project management, have you done any research about the industry? Have you reached out to others? What do you know that can help you get a position? And I said, no, like she just woke me up and I snapped. I wanted to cry after I spoke to her because she just really hit me with all this truth and realness that I've been needing to hear. So that really did push me to um, do due diligence to start a business. Um, we've talked about mentors and you, you've mentioned uh, developing mentoring relationships, but um, outside of your mentors, do you have any um, role models in general and how, how did they impact you if you wanted to give a shout out you know you feel free yes i do have several role models um but when i was starting to grow the firm i was kind of stuck and i met a gentleman by the name of james mcgee who is the founder of southern dallas progress community development corporation it's a nonprofit um, that is working on pushing affordable housing initiatives. And I met him through a short real estate program that I went through. Um, but after meeting him, I shared with him what I wanted to do. And he was just very, um, very helpful and just saying, well, just do it. Um, these are the people I know you can talk to them or, hey, come to these events. You can meet people. Um, attend this uh, networking event or a conference. I attended a conference that he actually invited me to, and I was able to work some deals with the people I met at the conference. So back to the value of networking and building the world. <laughs> you, you never miss an opportunity. It doesn't sound like you never miss an opportunity. What would you, what would you say was your greatest failure and what did you learn from it? Um, I would say, personally, um, when I was trying to get experience as an investor so I can then teach other investors, I didn't want to give investors consulting if I didn't have any experience in consulting. Um, it's like working with a realtor. If they don't own property, they don't really understand what buying a home is or mm -hmm. investing, selling a home. Uh, I bought a property when I was 23 or 24. It was my first investment property. And I did not do any due diligence or very, very little. And I ended up having a lot of trouble with that property. Um, it turned out that it was occupied by a family who bought it illegally from a scammer. <laughs> and then I was getting blown up by the media. They thought I was displacing families. So they titled local developer displacing families in South Dallas. Um, but eventually I ended up selling it back, um, selling it to a philanthropist who donated it to the family occupying it. So that's my biggest failure, I would say, um, understanding how to do due diligence. But it was the greatest thing that could have happened to me because now I'm so aware of all the research I have to do when investing in property, starting a business, shopping for a couch, anything. I do a lot of research on anything and everything now. <laughs> that makes it harder. Doesn't that make it harder to pick that couch once you have all that information? No? Information yeah. overload? Quality, where was it built? Who built it? I overthink everything now. <laughs> <laughs> What uh, uh, last question? And if Sierra would like to introduce herself and ask a question, we want to give her an opportunity. Um, what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? It sounds like you received quite a bit of good advice. Um, if you could say what's number one, what would that be? What are you waiting for? Just do it. That's awesome. That, that's awesome. And let's, let's, I'm going to reach out to Sierra. She might just try, she might be just trying to be sort of behind the scenes and listen in, but let's see if she would. Sierra, if you're in a position to and you'd like to turn on your camera and your mic or just your mic and ask a question, you're welcome to. Um, we'll give you some awkward wait time now to see. I actually don't have any questions. You answered all of them. It was actually really impressive what you did. 
Yeah, thank you. I agree. Like I said, I was really excited uh, that Ari made time to uh, to speak with us um, this afternoon. Uh, before we wrap things up, uh, I want to again just uh, thank you. Uh, always impressed. I, I keep up with you on LinkedIn pretty closely. Uh, been very Im impressed to, to see all that you're involved in. Um, you know, and again, uh, students could learn a lot, um, learn a lot from you by if, if, if you're willing to connect by uh, seeing all that, that you're doing. Is there anything you'd like to share before we uh, wrap things up? No, I'm glad we had this conversation. I hope I didn't speak too much because I can ramble, but um, <laughs> if anyone has any direct questions, um, I'm okay with you sharing my email or my LinkedIn. I'm happy to answer anything. And thank you for doing this. This is very much needed for the student community. Um, something that really impacted me in my career was hearing from other women in all these different industries. So I can then see an example, you know, of what their experience has been like. Yes. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you again. And we, we appreciate, we appreciate that. Again, we, we are recording this and it will be available uh, on LinkedIn, YouTube and our student uh, channel. Uh, our next, our next session, and it, it would be nice for you to, to get in on this one also. Ari. Our next session is uh, March the 10th. We're going to talk about starting a business, uh, entrepreneurship, uh, and some of the things to to consider with uh, Rodolfo Perez. Uh, so we're excited excited about that. Um, again, that's March 10th, same time. Uh, we appreciate you guys being here. Thanks a lot. Take Thanks. care. Stay in touch.